Clips on CBS North Carolina. With much anticipation, the nation is gearing up to see the first total solar eclipse in nearly 40 years. We're just about an hour away from the moon completely covering the sun in Oregon. It's expected to hit North Carolina around 2.40 this afternoon. Very close, very close right now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Russ Bowen. And I'm Maggie Newland. Thanks so much for joining us for CBS North Carolina at noon. We have team coverage leading up to the historic event. Meteorologist Kristen Ketchell is live at the Moorhead Planetarium in Chapel Hill. And Carly Griffith is at St. Timothy's in Raleigh. But let's start with our duo in the mountains. CBS North Carolina's Wes Hohenstein, Michael Hyland, both in Franklin, North Carolina right now for one of the areas that's right in the path of totality. And guys, I bet people are really starting to stack it in there right now, aren't they? Look at them. Indeed they are. You know, we were with you early this morning at 530 to be exact, and there was already a crowd, and normally this street is empty. It is a Monday afternoon, and the crowds have increased. We have got our wish and got sunny skies. Of course, that is shooting temperatures up to around 90. We are in the path of totality. We're 10 miles from the center line, from the maximum possible, possible eclipse. Now, our friends in Oregon will start to see the partial eclipse in just a couple of minutes. The maximum total eclipse. Michael will be here about 235. We've met a lot of people from across the ocean to across the state. A lot of them from the tribe. Give them back home in central North Carolina. You're looking at some video from earlier today. All the hustle and bustle here. Caught up with Jeffrey Williams and his wife Allison who are here from Raleigh. They bought 15 pairs of the eclipse glasses a year ago, then spent their time using satellites to pinpoint that precise location you were talking about, West, 10 miles from here where they have set up their tents to camp out. And Jeffrey explained to me what he envisions today will be like as he and his wife see the total eclipse. When the eclipse happens and the moon starts going in front of the sun, I will feel the solar system turning. I will be part of the universe turning. And I'm really into that. That's going to be cool. It really is such an incredible experience. Not only that we're all sharing it in it together, but it also kind of reminds you of this small place in the universe that right. we have at the same time. And you know, we're five uh, five hours from Raleigh, and we've seen people from Carborough, from Durham, from Fayetteville, from Raleigh. People who got here overnight, people who have been here all weekend. We're all here for the same reason: to watch the moon cover up the sun for two and a half minutes <laughs> in just a couple of hours. Of course, we will be covering it live from totality right here in Franklin, North Carolina. For Michael Hyland, I'm Wes Hohenstein, CBS North Carolina. And we continue our team coverage with meteorologist Kristen Ketchell live at the Planetarium in Chapel Hill. And Kristen, I would guess there are a lot of people geeking out big time there right now, right? <laughs> Well, Russ, we're starting to see some people trickling in here. The event just started a few minutes ago, and it continues until the partial eclipse is over just after 4 o'clock this afternoon. And we've got a lot going on here, so I'm going to bring in the director of the planetarium here. This is Todd Boyette. So, Todd, tell me what we have going on here. We have all kinds of events going on um, inside and out. It's a little warm today. There's a nice breeze right now. Um, peak viewing will be at 243 when uh, the moon covers about 93 percent of the sun. Um, we have uh, solar eclipse glasses, which is the only way to view the, the eclipse safely. Um, we have food trucks. We have water stations. Mm -hmm. um, you can share this great experience with uh, thousands <laughs> of your closest friends. It looks like a lot of fun out here. We're out here by the sundial, and this is where all the viewing is going to happen. But we do have a show going on inside the planetarium that you had to buy tickets for in advance, correct? Pre-registration sold out weeks ago. Um, it's the eclipse. It's the show about the eclipse. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much tells you everything you need to know. Um, you'll learn that even if you didn't get to go to the show, you'll learn that here. We have lots of volunteers and staff stationed um, inside and out. So uh, come on and join us. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. It looks like a lot of fun out here. We're just getting the party started here in Chapel Hill at Moorhead Planetarium. Again, the event just started and continues until just after 4 p.m. And we'll have updates throughout the afternoon. Live in Chapel Hill, I'm Storm Team Meteorologist Kristen Ketchell, CBS North Carolina. All right, Kristen, I'm sure that event will be packed as well. And heading to Raleigh now, where St. Timothy students are preparing for the eclipse. That's where we find CBS North Carolina's Carly Griffith. And Carly, lots of uh, excited young men and women, I think. 
Absolutely, Maggie. And you know, this courtyard that we're standing in right now, uh, it's right behind uh, some of the, or right next to some of the classrooms. The courtyard will be filled with students a little later today for the eclipse. Uh, but right now, those students are in classrooms learning about safety tips and also getting, re getting uh, ready for science experiments. And one third grade class that we visited with were making pinhole viewers for the eclipse. Uh, now, that uh, started after students got a, a refresher from their teacher about what exactly makes an eclipse happen. And the class then split up into groups to make use of some empty cereal boxes. Now, the pinhole viewers, just like it sounds, you make a hole the size of a pin at one end of the box so that you can see the image of the eclipse projected into the box. Science teacher Megan Shank says being able to show students an eclipse rather than just teaching about the theory is a rare and wonderful opportunity. It's really exciting because um, we talk about these concepts all the time in class and um, you know we can model them with uh, the tools we have in the classroom but there's nothing like being able to see it. Students have already tested their pinhole viewers and they did a great job making them. They even let me look through one of their boxes or look into one of their boxes. And now students will start gathering back outside here in the courtyard around 2 o'clock to actually view the uh, start of what will be the eclipse for us here. And we will be right here alongside them as they get to see uh, this wonderful, wonderful experience. Uh, but for now, we are live in Raleigh. I'm Carla Griffith for CBS North Carolina. Yeah, talk about a learning opportunity. That's oh really, goodness, really amazing yeah. for those those students. And obviously, no pressure, but <laughs> oh. the weather is key <laughs> to making sure we can actually see the eclipse. We have been feeling the pressure on this for a long time, let me tell you. But I want to start off with what we're going to see and kind of the timeline here around central North Carolina. Around 115, it will begin, but 145, we're seeing that chunk kind of out of the sun. We see even more of it disappear behind the moon at 2 o'clock, 2.20. Right around 245 is when we will see the most of the solar eclipse here in central North Carolina. Anywhere from 90 to say 95% of the sun will be covered up in behind the moon. And then we'll start to see that sun reappear through 315, 345. By about 405, it should be complete here in central North Carolina. So yes, the important thing here, let's look at the cloud cover. And we do have a few clouds. It's 90 degrees. It's going to be hot and humid as you're out watching it. One of those clouds is in the wrong spot and it may not necessarily mean for the best viewing for you, but Certainly, there will be that chance for just a few clouds. 93 are high. We drop back to 91 during the eclipse. We will rebound to say 92 with just a stray shower possible at 4 o'clock. I'm going to walk you through that chance for a shower and see those clouds coming up in your complete storm team forecast. Russ. All right, and the State Department of Transportation urging you to be very smart while driving during the eclipse. Do not stop on the road. Pull over somewhere and be safe before you look up if you do. And make sure to allow extra time to get to your destination. Don't drive while wearing the eclipse glasses you can't see anything and make sure you turn on your headlights well if you don't